What's up my fellow Wildrift enjoyers and welcome back to another Rift Guys Wildrift video and for today we are back with the OP builds and for this patch we have a few special ones for you including Gwen, Samira, Jace, Fiora and Draven. But before we jump into the video let's take a look at our question of the day. What's your take on the current Wild Pass skin, like the Superman Jace? What do you think about it? What are your doubts about it? What do you like? What do you dislike? Just let me know in the comments below. But now let's start with the video. For our first champion, we have the newly released Gwen. Absolutely broke it and fun to pilot. And running with scissors is quite fun with her. But let's get to the build. For runes, you want to certainly take Conqueror because of the recent changes to the rune. Now, even true damage is healing you when it's fully stacked. And on Gwen, you're dealing quite a lot of true damage, so please take Conqueror. For your second rune, that's quite the pickle here because there's not many options you have available. Most of the time, Triumph will just be the best. The next thing is Adaptive Carapace and afterwards Demolish. Especially in the jungle roll or even in the Baron lane is just such a powerful rune because the tankier you become or the game progresses, the more gold you'll get. And if you trade once well in the Baron lane, you'll easily get one or two plays immediately thanks to the power of Demolish. You should just always take this. For jungle, it's literally the same because if I gave you the choice, hmm, what do I do after I gank? Immediately recall or hit the tower for like an additional 5 seconds to get extra gold, what do you choose? Hmm, of course, extra gold because it's broken and for some reason it's still not used all the time, but well. Here we are and I'm taking you to do it, so please do it. But now, let's talk about the items. For items, in the top lane, you at least want to start with Riftmaker to make you more tanky. In the jungle roll, you can make an argument that Nash's Tooth might be better. But overall, Riftmaker into Nash's Tooth, Reverend Staff Cap, Infinity Orb, Cosmic Drive, Defensive Boots with a Gargoyle Enchant. And I'll lead you exactly through as to why you want those items. Riftmaker makes you more tanky, Nash's Tooth gives you cooldown reduction and attack speed, Reverend's Death Cap amplifies your ability power and Infinity Orb just gives you even more damage because of the execute mechanic and most of the time enemies won't have much magic resistance so Void Stuff is just pointless to buy in most instances. However, you can substitute the Infinity Orb with Void Stuff if you truly need it. And afterwards you can just go Cosmic Drive to run even faster. And for the Gargoyle Enchant, well since your champion mostly deals true damage with your first ability, you're not really reliant and tackled by the damage reduction and therefore Gargoyle just becomes very powerful because you get so unbelievably tanky. Amazing. Going from amazing to super, we now are talking about Jace. Well, he's also getting a nice new skin in the battle pass, so we need to do something for him. Similar to before, we want to run Conqueror, Giant Slayer or Champion depending on where you want to go, Adaptive Carapace or Bone Plating and Demolish. The current theme is most likely you're gonna see Demolish everywhere because this rune is simply too overpowered and got buffed for absolutely no reason and yeah, here we are. As for items, here's a little bit of a tricky thing. We start with the Hullbreaker as per usual making us infinitely tanky and unable to be killed. But immediately after we go for a tier of the Goddess to make sure we scale into the later stages of the game because Mana Mute adds the most damage to a consistent DPS in a fight. After the tier we go for a Black Cleaver, then a Cerulean's Garage, then we complete the Mana Mute or if you feel like you can already do it when the tier hits full stacks, then we go to a Death Stance, Defensive Boots plus a Stasis Enchant. With that we have an easy way to just stomp the enemy. But don't forget that the earlier you complete Mana Mute the faster you will get it stacked because of how it works. But here's the downside to it. You are significantly squishier if you have a Mana Mune compared to a Black Cleaver pad with a Hullbreaker. That is something you have to judge game by game. And it's very important that you make the right decision. Because if you mess up once, well, you might see yourself in the fountain very soon after. But don't worry, we have another pick coming that sends the enemy into the fountain over and over and over again, and yet again, it's a champion that benefits from the Conqueror changes. It's Fiora. And with Fiora in the Baron lane or even the jungle role, you have a champion that loves to duel people and kill them on cooldown. Anyone who plays Fiora knows exactly that this champion is utterly evil to face. Now let's talk you through why this champion is so good with the new things. Once again we are going for the Conqueror rune because of the true damage changes compared to Grass before. Conqueror is just superior in many ways, apart from just early laning, but Conqueror is scaled so much better so please don't get baited by Grass. Afterwards we go for the champion rune because well, we are a duelist, we are the ones winning, we have ego so yeah there we go. For the next rune we go for Adaptive Carapace and once again Demolish because Demolish is, well who would have guessed, one of the best runes in the game. As for items we got Divine Sundra, Hullbreaker, Bladed Rune King, Death Stance, Gage and Defensive Boots with a Stasis Enchant. 
Divine Sandra as a Sheen item grants one of the most potent power spikes for Fiora as a champion. She has very low cooldowns and can make use of the Sheen passive over and over again. But here's the real trick about Divine Sandra. Divine Sandra deals the last damage in Trinity Force, but it makes you invincible because of the healing capabilities. You just never die because you constantly heal from your abilities on even tankier targets. And for your next item, Hullbreaker, this puts even more emphasis on your tankiness, so you can't really have any problems with dealing people. It's just crazy how it works. And after this, you can go for Blitted Rune King for the attack speed and nice more DPS. As for your two last items, they just add more emphasis to the tankiness, making you invulnerable and invincible at the same time. Sometimes you'll change up items such as a Spirit Visage into the mix because, well, you heal a lot and Spirit Visage makes you heal even more. So if you face a lot of AP, go Spirit Visage. Thank you. In case you were wondering, what about Samira? Well, let's talk about Samira. Samira as a champion is basically the AD variant of a Katarina. So be patient, wait for your team to do something, wait for enemy cooldowns, then dash in, get a kill, reset with another dash, pull the infernal trigger and kill everyone. Just gun them down like the degenerates they are. To do so in the smoothest fashion, here are the runes. Conqueror, Vampire's no Giant Slayer, Nullifying Op and Nimbus Cloak. Gotta go fast, you know how it goes. For items, you want Bloodthirst as your first item, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Black Black Cleaver and Cyrilda's Grudge. This champion scales a lot with the raw AD because raw AD is the most powerful thing when it comes to your ultimate ability. Another neat thing that you need to keep in mind is that your ultimate shoots out a lot of bullets instantaneously or in a high frequency. Therefore, Black Cleaver is applied super fast. Combining this with the Cyrilda's Grudge, you have a lot of armor pen and a lot of AD. So the only thing that's really open for discussion here would be the Phantom Dancer. What other item would you like to have here? Because here are your options. You can have a Statics, you can have a Rapid Fire Cannon, a Runans, basically anything you want to make sure that you hit enough crit in the game. Because with this build you will not be on 100% crit, which might be a little bit bad or feels bad in most certain situations. Nonetheless, with this build you're tanky and you have the ability to shed a lot of armor, which makes it easier to clean up, especially in a bruiser heavy meta. And now last but surely not the least for this one, we have Draven. And with this one, it's a super special one that none of you would have guessed. Believe me. So Draven is infamous for stomping lane. But what about a rune that isn't really oriented about stomping lane because he doesn't need to? Since Draven is already so potent that he stomps lane whatsoever, what about a rune that helps him scale throughout the later stages of the game that adds even more power to his second ability in the terms of attack speed? It's Lethal Tempo. For the runes we call Lethal Tempo, Champion of Empirism, Adaptive Carapace and Nimbus Cloak. With this, we are bound to destroy people. But when it comes to the build, Listen, we are going crazy here. Instead of completing a single item first, we go for a double BF sword. We want raw AD to beat up people. Afterwards, we complete it for Stormraiser and Infinity Edge. After that, we go for Bloodthirst, a Mod Reminder, and then a Charge Blade. And to round it all up, we go for Defensive Boots with a Quicksilver Enchant. Oh yeah, by the way, we are running Flash and Ghost. Amazing. Because in this case, Flash and Ghost will help us to stick on people and just run them down. But Keep in mind, playing Draven isn't the easiest and you will struggle a bit with catching axes. So please put ample practice to the board so you make sure to not drop too many, because it feels really bad once you do this, I can tell you that from experience. With this, and especially the double BF sword, you'll have the most damage possible. Because raw AD doesn't care if you crit or don't crit, and you're scaling on your first ability and ult will demolish people in teamfights. Just imagine yourself hitting your ultimate on 5 people, that's a gachigasm moment. And that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see more Rift Guards content, make sure to stop by more frequently and watch more of us. We love you and we'll be back for more.